I, I, I like the direction we're headed in, you know, personally, because I think that more people are putting the focus on mindfulness, you know. Um, I think that we've had years and years of, you know, people focusing on their physical health. Like, I don't even know what gluten is, but it's free everywhere. So everybody's always, like, like everybody's focusing on what they're putting inside their bodies. But now I think people are starting to focus on what, what, what they're putting inside their brains. And I think that's such a good thing, because if we're being honest, you know, America has raised, like, like a bunch of sociopaths. Like they literally tell us not to feel. The only way to eradicate the stigma around mental health is for everybody to tell these stories. And you know, I think a lot of times we think we're doing ourselves favors by keeping secrets and keeping things to ourselves. But when you actually go out there and you express that you're dealing with certain issues, you give somebody else the power and the strength to want to deal with their issues as well. So like, yo, everybody has to tell their story. When did you first realize that you actually had something called borderline personality disorder, which it's probably the most difficult, I think, of all mental health crises to manage. Well, first, <clears throat> it wasn't until I was at McLean Hospital in Waltham, Massachusetts, where I got the diagnosis and understood what was going on. But when I first realized that something was wrong was when I was actually uh, having some off the field issues in my relationships, you know, mom, dad, brothers and sisters, I couldn't manage them, that, those relationships the right way. <clears throat> Go to practice, and I dropped three footballs in a row. And the reason why I wasn't significant is because football and, and the football field was always my sanctuary. No matter what was going on off the field, I was able to go there, escape, and still perform at an extremely high level. And I remember that this was the only moment ever in my career where I actually was thinking about something other than football. And I dropped three balls in a row, and it's like, holy shit, something's going on. The relationship problems you're having at home, the people you love, you almost pushed them away. Was that part of the diagnosis? 100%. I mean, that's what borderline personality disorder is. It's, uh, you know, it's a emotional disorder. Uh, are you able to cope and manage just common stressors? Are you able uh, to get yourself back down the baseline? Someone who lives with borderline personality disorder, those skills don't come naturally. So you have to go to a McLean hospital and be in mentalization therapy, dialectic therapy. So I went to rehab at 17 for addiction. I got out, I thought I was all better. Um, when I got elected to Congress, because I had overcome the public stigma of having been an addict, right? Because um, I had won an election after that had come out because the guy I had been in drug rehab with wrote a story in the National Enquirer about how he had been in drug rehab with me and put my picture on the cover of National Enquirer. And so that actually, at the moment, was the worst thing in my life because I thought it was gonna spell the end of my political career. And it turned out to be the best thing in my life because it meant that I no longer had to keep it under wraps. Um, I could be much more open. And I ended up becoming the sponsor of the Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act, which was kind of our medical civil rights bill for mental health and addiction.